You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256. 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. Uh, hey guys, sorry we're busy there killing imaginary zombies because that's what we do in our free time. We just imagine zombies are in front of us and pretend we're killing them. We're hip like that. But guys, we're excited for the new, the newest second episode of Walking Dead because Bing is for doing it. We're doing the After Buzz Walking Dead show. And guys, sitting across from me, the ever so lovely Kristen Carroll. Hey guys. The ever so handsome Daryl Kristen. What's up, everybody? And guys, I am Dave Klein, and we're here to talk about episode two. Two, sick. The name of the title being Herschel. So let's jump into the first scene of the episode with Herschel's leg being cut off, blood is spurting everywhere, and the prisoners have now been sort of let out. They were locked in the cafeteria, and that was kind of subtle for those of you who were just watching the show. If, if you read the comics, that was a point in the comics, but the prisoners were locked in the cafeteria, and that's going to become a big point. And they're unlocked now, and they kind of witness the crew trying to frantically save Herschel's life. Yeah, they've been in there for 10 months, and this is the first hum- first humans that they've seen. Yes, 10 months. and it's a long time. Yeah. And the first ladies they've seen. <laughs> That's probably right. an even a longer time than that, actually. <laughs> right. A long, long time. <laughs> so there's kind of this frantic moment of trying to find something to roll Herschel on that they mm-hmm. end up finding. And I thought it was awesome seeing the blood spurting out of his leg stump while they were throwing him up there. Kind of a good attention to detail. And the the tension with the prisoners kind of starts right here. They do have a leader already who kind of comes out. His name is Tomas. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they actually mentioned it on the show, so we went ahead and looked it up. But Tomas is the name. And for those of you who read the comics, we found out Robert Kirkman said that they switched some of the names of the characters. One of them was named Dexter in the comics, for those of you who read it. And they decided because of the show Dexter, they wanted to change the name of the character. So some of the names are different. Some of them are the same. But we have Tomas being the acting leader in the group, which is something we talked about a little bit last week. Yeah, that there was going to be another Rick right. for their group. And, and and he, you know, he was giving me some shame with some of his uh, decision making. I was like, what is going on? This guy is like a loose cannon. Yeah, it really does feel like if Shane had been the leader, this is what it would have been yeah, when you think seriously. about it. <laughs> um, so there's five in total. There are five prisoners. And right after this frantic moment, one of the, I think it was Tomas who had the gun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The group kind of ends up running away, to, A, to save Herschel, but they're sort of running away from the prisoners, too, trying to keep them at bay. And Daryl's kind of keeping the front line there, holding them back. And they finally get Herschel back to the full crew so mm-hmm. they can try and heal him. And Daryl's there kind of keeping watch. And the prisoners break in. They, they kind of spot Daryl, and they want to know what's going on. And Daryl says, you've been pardoned by the state of Georgia. Congratulations. Something to that extent, which was pretty funny. I love that. Today's your lucky day, fellas. So they're they're really suspicious at this point because they thought there was going to be a rescue team coming in. They thought it was going to be like the National Guard or something like that, and they don't know what's going on. They have no idea what's outside. And Daryl and Rick at this point have been like, well, just go outside. And they're suspicious of, well, what is outside? Why are you guys in here? Mm -hmm. What's going on outside? Yeah. And they didn't believe that that uh, Rick and Daryl and, and T-Dog were the ones who actually had killed all those zombies that were outside once they got out there. They were like, you guys were the ones who did this? Yeah, yeah. this Robin Hood cat. Yeah, this Robin yeah, Hood this cat. Yeah, this Robin Hood cat. Took down all these zombies. Well, that's got to be weird for them because they even said when they were in there, they asked the inmates, you know, why hadn't you broken out before? And the bars on the window, they they didn't even think about any time they opened the door, all the zombies came with. Yeah. So they figure they've got a pretty good area back there, some food. A nice uh, little door to take a 
Yeah. Pissing. A door for a piss <laughs> and <laughs> whatever <laughs> else. A little, little room. <laughs> um, and we get the prisoners also there. So they were locked in 10 months, as you said. Mm -hmm. That's how long they were locked in this 294 cafeteria. 294 days. 200. Thank you. Good, good catch. No problem. With the exact amount. Or thank is it 292? Axel. Because there was a contention between two of the prisoners about the exact amount of days. That's true. So they also have the, as much food as they could possibly need. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of set to survive, at least. They're set to survive. They have food. They have shelter. Presumably water, you'd, you'd have to assume. Mm -hmm. And somewhere to put all of their waste. <laughs> and they're just locked in the cafeteria. So because of all those noises and the banging, they just decide that there's no reason to leave. Yeah. And... They say that a riot broke out when things first kind of happened. There's a big riot that broke out, and they're kind of asking Rick as Rick comes in eventually after the whole Herschel thing. And we'll get to the whole Herschel storyline later. Right now we're going to talk specifically about the prisoners. But Rick, after dealing with Herschel, comes in, and he's kind of telling everybody, calming Daryl down, mm -hmm. telling everybody what's going on. And that everything is gone. And they just don't seem to quite get it at first. They're like, right. And they kind of have a humanizing moment, too. The first thing that they want to know about is... They want to talk to their families. That's the very first thing that they their think kids. of. Their kids. Yeah, yeah their kids, their, their parents. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was a good moment to humanize the characters a little bit mm -hmm. because you would think of them as maybe what are they in prison for? Are they murderers? Are they rapists? Are they, do they do drugs? Or what is the reason? So this kind of humanizes their characters off the bat. Yeah, I like that. Especially you find out a little bit about them, but not too much throughout the entire episode. You, Axel had said something about i like my pharmaceuticals but i'm not a killer yes yeah. so you know and axel's the one with the mustache that yeah and axel for those of you who read the comics was one of the characters who did make it over from the comics so axel was one of one of the few who who does make it over mr southern accent himself yeah, yeah. although and he's a little more uh i think kind of badass in the comics he's like a motorcycle dude in the comics he's like a motorcycle gang guy at least that's what i interpreted it as yeah, he didn't look like that here uh, and he has one yeah. catchphrase, no which I'm going soon. to try to remember. But yeah, he does not look at it at all. Like here, like in the comics, he looks like he came straight out of, out of Sons of Anarchy. Not so much here. But after Rick explains everything, they end up going outside. And I like. I think it was. Um, I think it was. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Oscar, who has the. Um, it looked like a janitor broom that he's using as a weapon as they go outside. I think it was Oscar. I think it was Oscar. Yeah. So. Um, they go outside, and they're kind of still discussing what's going on here, and they end up arguing over whose prison it is and who does it belong to. And the first thing is Tomas wants to know where they're headed, and Rick tells them, well, for now, nowhere. Like, this is their plan is to stay there. What did you guys think of, I guess, the points that the two of them had? Who do you think would technically be in the right here? Well, they were locked up in, in the cafeteria, so I think... Personally, Rick and, and that whole group took over. I like the fact that they were going to try to split it because they are still human and Rick's still trying to be nice and do the right thing mm -hmm. with all of that. But he was kind of, he was right. It wasn't the prison, even the prisoners, they're prisoners. Right. It wasn't theirs anyways, even before the zombie apocalypse that was, they were put there. It wasn't their prison anyways. Right. And here's my thing. Okay. You're, you're fighting zombies. You want to have as many people on your team as possible, mm -hmm. okay? So let's build the posse versus decrease the posse. So, you know, I, I, I agree that Rick was, I felt Rick was more in the right of this, but the, even with the prisoners, I'm like, let's just build this team. Let's not fight each other. Well, you know? The it seems like problem is you don't know why they're prisoners, and you've got a pregnant lady, you've got a couple of children in there. You don't know, and after seeing Tomas do some of the very violent things, you don't want that around Carl yeah. or Lori. That's not something you want as part of your group. I mean, at the same time, they're kind of doing that to zombies, though, and they've sort of become that in a way. And that's what, yeah, that's a good point. But I think, I think it was actually sort of Axel who brought up, why don't we just split? I think Rick at the beginning was just like, you guys need to leave. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to kill them, but he just wanted them to get out. He's like, this is our prison. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. I think that's how Rick was seeing it. And Axel was kind of that voice of reason to me of like, uh, why don't we just split it? And I agree with what you were saying, Daryl. And this is something that I, I don't really get a lot of times. And I think you see it a lot throughout The Walking Dead and different survival shows is why can't they just like try to get along and agree like, yeah, having a bigger group is better. Why are we trying to kill each other? Let's right. work together as a team. But they immediately have this giant tension towards each other. And I think 
because the prisoners were there you, you should, why kick them out but at the same time it was rick's crew who cleaned up everything they killed all the zombies they came in they made the prison safer already mm -hmm. so i think they have a place too so i i think that why can't we just share right why can't we just share guys and and uh, and and I do agree also with what you just said, Kristen, too, and the fact that, yeah, there's going to be murderers and killers, mm -hmm. and maybe you need to weed out the really bad ones, but overall, let's build the crew. I mean, on that note, and I don't want to spoil anything for people who read the comics, and who knows what they're going to bring up, but there is, there are some really bad prisoners in the comics, some really bad ones, so I'm going to be curious to see if that comes up in, as we watch the show. So do you think there's other prisoners we haven't met yet? Um... I don't think in the show there are, but and I, I just don't want to spoil anything because of the comics. But just, I, I'll be really watching to see if, if, for those who've read the comics, this one thing happens. So I don't want to spoil anything, but there may be some stuff that goes down. So, um, they, they kind of have, and this is another comic difference here, is uh, the prisoners in the comics were actually pretty happy to see them because they'd been locked in the cafeteria for 10 months and they knew something bad was happening. Mm -hmm. Here, Tomas is kind of leading the, who are you guys? I want to kill you all. So, difference there, and they actually told them straight up in the comics that they had a lot of food. Here, T Tomas, not so much. He's like, uh, we only have a little left when they're talking about splitting it halfway, and he's trying to not give them things. Yeah. Yeah. So they come to this deal, though, which is that Rick will help clear, Rick and the crew will help clear the prison out for them to live in a safe place and have their own block mm -hmm. where they don't have one room for booing and peeing, and that's it. But and in exchange, they get half of the food. But they're still leaving them half of the food, so they're still trying to be nice. And when you think about how many more people are in Rick's crew than the prisoner crew, that is a pretty good deal for the prisoners. I think so, too. I like that deal. So, yeah, it seems like a good deal to me. They have more than one room to be in. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, then what happens is we have Big Tiny. We find, find out one of the names of the prisoners, and he's talking about the walkers and what we were talking about. They're kind of exploring the cafeteria. They find there is a lot of food there. Um, Rick opens the door to the bathroom, <laughs> which, um, and... That's gets a pleasant. gets a pleasant whiff there and <laughs> immediately closes it up. And I think it was Big Tiny who that, warned him not to. That's ten months worth of whiff, man. That's got to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> this that's what I always think. If anything horrible were to happen, the one thing I would miss the most would honestly be modern day plumbing. <laughs> that really is the thing I would miss the most. Or toilet paper, like in Revolution. That's true. <laughs> that was one of his favorite things. Anybody who watches that. So. They end up, um, yeah, and in Revolution, sorry. So they um, they end up deciding it's going to clear out the cell. And Rick's explaining to the group that how you take out a walker. You take out their brain. You have to hit them in the head. There's nothing else that you can do. And Tomas is all like, yeah, 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 we got it, we got it. We've killed people before. And yeah. This, these are not people. Yeah, so he's, he thinks it's fine. So immediately afterwards in the scene with them, they spot the zombies, and we see Daryl using his signals that they've been using. And, and you kind of get this the juxtaposition between the two different groups and how much the crew has come together where Daryl's using their hand signals. And T-Dog -T and Rick know exactly what this means. Yeah. Meanwhile, the prisoners just completely run for, they don't <laughs> kill, and they just start... They don't listen to anything. Nope. They're just like stabbing anywhere they can. Stabbing in the stomach, you know, places that are just irrelevant. Now, they were kind of helping each other out. One of them would grab the zombies from behind, the other one would stab him in the stomach, but that, that right. doesn't really work. Which would have worked great. And I love the look that Daryl, T Dog, and Rick give as yeah. they're doing it. It's just like, like they just look at them like they're total idiots. Yeah. Like, who are you guys? It's like, I told you so, look. You know what I mean? Or, and it was it's like amateurs. Their training. Yeah, amateurs. Yeah. And it just shows how much they've they've grown to in this world where they really are so experienced. And you're seeing this difference between the experienced and the non-experienced. Mm -hmm. Where I mean, they're just kind of watching and letting them do their thing. And they could help too, but they're just like in awe at how inexperienced they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they even realize how much they've grown in that sense. Because it's funny, I was talking to my mom about the show, because she watches it too, and she was talking about how they were just killing everything, and how Kristen was talking about last week is sort of like a game for them, almost, mm -hmm. in a way. And we really see that that is how much they've grown as far as killing zombies go. They're just that good at it now. Yeah. Well, and I think it showed the difference between the inmates... You know, some of them were probably killers, obviously, and that's how they view killing these zombies, where Rick and that whole group, it's not 
about killing. It's about surviving, and it has to have a strategy, and there's more to it than that. And it shows not really their humanity with it, but, but their humanity, mm-hmm. that, that it's not that same, I don't want to say evil behind it, but there's well, not that same motivation. Yeah, and it. I guess when you say that too, some of those the ways that they were trying to kill them were pretty brutal, like yeah. holding the guy back and just stabbing him constantly in the stomach. Whereas when you see Rick's group, as you were saying, it's kind of like a one hit, it's done. I'm going to do one hit and I'm out onto the next thing to just kind of be efficient mm-hmm. and move on. So it's not like you said, it's not for pleasure at all. And who knows, maybe for some of these inmates, it is. Yeah. Well, but Rick calls it a prison riot. No more prison riots. So. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. it reminded me of watching some prison film and a, and a riot broke out and it was a shanking that happened. Mm-hmm. You know. So yeah. That's how they fought. You That's know? totally what I was thinking, too. Yeah. It was just, like, shanking each other. Yeah. But shanking the zombies. Yeah, shanking the zombies. So, shanking <laughs> some Shank zombies. Zombie. Shanking some zombies. So, we then get an awesome scene, which is the handcuff zombie who rips its own handcuff off of its hand because yeah. it just wants to eat so badly. And all I was thinking was, man, if only Merle could have done that in season one. It would have been so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that's Steven sorry, that just that made here. me laugh that's, so hard. That right is Steven in the booth. <laughs> Yeah, we got to give a shout out to Greg Nicotero for all of his makeup and design for the zombies this season because it is definitely they've taken it up five notches. I swear, you know. Yeah. I mean, from from Herschel's leg all the way to the what you were just saying about the zombies' arms being or hands being ripped off when he's taking off the handcuffs. Yeah, and that all looked you awesome. Have is the bone. I didn't even notice at first they had that so bone creepy. thing sticking out, which ended up being an awesome stabbing tool mm-hmm. against uh, Big Tiny. <laughs> so Big Tiny. It, the zombie just comes and stabs him in the back with its bone. And now, as Rick explains, he is infected. Mm-hmm. And Big Tiny and the prisoners just, again, they don't get it. They don't know what this means. They're just like, even though they were kind of glossed over while they were outside, they just don't understand this new world they're in. Well, Andrew was really PO'd at Rick because Rick was saying, there's nothing that we can really do. And Andrew was like, well, you saved your, your friend. How come you're not saving ours? Yeah. And because the cut's different and you can't stop right. it like you could for the other one. I guess you could cut off his entire, you cut off his legs, cut off his arms, and, or I guess you'd have to cut off his head. That's really the only thing at that it's point. Only, yeah. Because yeah. his back is stabbed. I mean, exactly. it's cut out a big hole in the bite. I don't know. Well, and I kind of like the fact that Big Tiny was the only name that we knew at that point because then then you took him away. You kind of liked him. I felt, I think I told you, I told you guys that it kind of reminded me of a little John sort yeah. of a name. Or it's, well, especially because they also said really Robin Hood funny. earlier, too. Exactly. So it did make you think of that Robin Hood connection. And I agree. It was like, I, th- I, feel like, I think that was the only prisoner at that point that I actually cared about because it was the only one we got in to know his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of funny. They give you that and they take it away right away. And Axel even said that Big Tiny was a good friend of his a little bit later on when he was saying he wasn't a killer and these are my friends and yeah. Tiny was his friend. I mean, he, he came across as a good, one of the better guys of the prisoners. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, I mean, he just, he didn't come across at all evil to me. He was just like, oh, this is one of the prisoners I'm going to get to like. Yeah. And then he died. So yeah. I didn't yeah. get to like him too much, but I, I thought I was going to get to like him and he was going to be the ones I liked. But it ended up being Tomas who just, He's like, all right, you know what? I got to do what I got to do. And just immediately, I think it was like a machete's yeah, him machete. in the head. Yeah. Yeah. It was and very Jason Voorhees. Yes. Killing. And just goes at him as he falls down. It's like not even one is good enough. He just keeps going at it. Yeah. Well, I like the, the filming during that because once he finally got down, all you see is Tomas and the blood just splattering on his yeah. face. And I didn't see that coming. I mean, when when he did it, I was like yeah. completely shocked. I thought there was going to be a bigger argument. I thought they were still going to argue more and that they were going to end up like locking Big Tiny up or something just yeah. to be like, see, we'll lock him up and we'll show you guys if you want. Yeah, I, this is how it I, works. Right. I thought they were just going to be kind of more reasonable about it. But Tomas didn't let any of that happen. He's like, all right, whatever. He just wants to move on. Yeah. He's done. He's over it. He's just over it. One less mouth to feed. Well, that's why exactly. Tomas reminded me of, of last season, Shane, towards the end. I mean, he was uncontrollable, and, you know, he was just, he was unpredictable. You didn't know what he was going to do next. Which is interesting, because one's a prisoner and one was a cop. Right. Yeah, good. Yeah. I like that's I like that. So, right afterwards, um, we get that Daryl and um, Rick, they don't trust, for some, for some reason, I don't yeah. know, but they don't trust Tomas. 
and they're at this room where they have to open up a cell block door. And it's, it's finally for the cell block that they're getting for the prisoners. They're ready to open it up. And Daryl's kind of telling Rick, like, hey, anything goes south, I am fine with killing this guy. I'll mm-hmm. Just give me the word. I will kill him. Yeah. And Tomas gave my, my favorite quote of the episode. As he's about to open what was supposed to be one door, Tomas, you were only supposed to open one. <laughs> he is asked, you bitches ready? ready. <laughs> <laughs> I love that quote. So that's what they should do every time they, they're about to do something big. Yeah. I want them to use that quote more often, even though Tomas is no longer with us. <laughs> but he opens both doors because he's an asshole. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's the only logical reason why. And all the walkers just burst out. And Tomas is kind of just swinging wildly, clearly trying to accidentally kill Rick, throws a walker on the oh, Rick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then Daryl was able to save him. Well, he opened those two doors, hoping that they'd be overwhelmed, thinking he could probably take care of himself, but not everybody else could. Yeah. I mean, Rick would have been fine if he hadn't had walkers thrown on him and yeah. a wild card throwing, like, swinging at him. I don't think he was expecting that. Mm-mm. Yeah, and, like, from the beginning, Rick, as you were saying, Rick and Daryl were already suspicious about Tomas. I think, you know, obviously Tomas showed his true colors. Yeah, Rick tells from Daryl. From the beginning. He makes one move, and Daryl goes, just give me the signal. Yeah. So something happened right then that surprised me, too, which is, and this is, again, kind of where it differs from the like comments just a little bit, but um, right afterwards, Rick is yelling at Tomas for what Tomas did, and Tomas is just like, well, it happens. I don't think I can use that word on this show, but I'll throw a bitch all I want. Uh, so Rick says, I get it. It happens. And just straight up kills him with the machete right there. Headshot. Yes. <laughs> nice. And it was just right there. He just gets it done right in front of everybody. And immediately uh, Andrew just peels out of there. Andrew's yeah. the one other prisoner, uh, the one who runs away, whose name we I don't think we ever got. But Andrew just peels the hell out of there. <laughs> and Rick chases afterwards. And I'm going to mention this for the people who read the comics because we have gotten people saying that they want us to reference the comics more. For those who watch, I'm sorry, but who only watch the show. But Try not to spoil it. No, this isn't going to spoil anything. In, in the comics, what happens is Rick kills the same leader, but he does it during the zombie thing. So it's almost what Tomas was doing. Rick kills the guy and shoots him and pretends like it was just, a, oh, it just happened by accident. Mm-hmm. So he tries to play it off like an accident, whereas here he just straight up kills him. And I like how he killed him here. It was the same way he'd kill a zombie. Yeah, it was. Right, you're right. to the head. Yeah, it, You're exactly right. And I guess that's how he's now used to. He's just trained, yeah. and that's how you kill people now. I w- and I wonder if that also didn't have to do a little bit with the fact that just killing became a way of life to him a little yeah. bit. and. There's no emotion to it, so he just kills like it's another zombie. I think you're right. I, I thought think, that was kind of I think that's kind of what it's becoming. And it also, if you notice, he killed him in the exact same way that Tomas killed Big Tiny. Mm. With the machete to the head and straight through the top. So, I mean, although he killed him from the front, but it was still... Because <laughs> well, he has a little bit more honor, right? And, and at the end of the day, Rick is a trained police officer. So he is trained to already separate certain emotion from any killing anyway, you know, yeah. prior to the, the zombie breakout. So I'd like to have a calm discussion on this topic. Do you think we can manage that? I don't think they could manage <laughs> that. I don't think they could. <laughs> didn't work. So I think, but I agree with what Kristen is saying, and yeah, he does have to separate his emotion. I think after that point, you'd be pissed, like, hey, you tried to kill me. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we're seeing this transformation with Rick really fully transgress, where he is just losing his emotions when it comes to killing. It's just another thing he does. Mm-hmm. And it's just second like, nature. yeah, it's just second nature. And it, he didn't even, he didn't even flinch about it. He just does it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, th- like, you don't see him twitch. You don't see afterwards. He doesn't think about it. He just does it. As soon as Andrew peels away, he just runs after Andrew without giving a second thought at that moment. At that, at moment. that moment. But I think that's because this guy was really deserved it. Yeah. Well, he talked to Lori earlier about it, and she said, if that's what you feel you need to do, is kill any of these guys, just do it with a clear conscience. Yeah. And his conscience was clear as far as I'm concerned. And I definitely, with Tomas. Yeah, and I definitely want to get back to that conversation when we talk about the whole Herschel thing, too, because yeah. I think that was an important conversation in general. Mm-hmm. But, um, so after he peels away, after Andrew peels away and Rick runs after him, let's, let's just go ahead and talk about Rick, because we're following him, but Rick chases Andrew. Andrew runs into a room where there's an outdoor little, I guess, like, this pen. It looks like kind of a pen for people to exercise, maybe. Yeah. And um, there's just a bunch of walkers there. Yeah. And 
Rick notices that and just locks the guy in just to fend for himself. And the guy pleads with him to save him. Rick doesn't do it unless the guy die. And that's when we get that moment that you mentioned, Daryl, where Rick, you see that it, he, he does kind of have that moment of realization about what he just did. When he closes the door, he's shaking, yeah, he's shaking. and you can hear the screams in the background. Yeah. yeah. You could tell he was consciously thinking about it. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he, he stuck with his decision, but he was consciously thinking about what he had just done. Well, I don't think Andrew was necessarily a threat right away. I don't think Andrew... It wasn't I, like Tomas at all. Yeah, I don't think Andrew even came off, at least to me, I didn't see him do anything bad. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, I think he was just like someone's running away. Like, maybe you'd imagine they tell somebody or go get help or something like that, and maybe that's why... But it just seemed like he was scared, so he's running away because yeah. he's scared. And he's scared, but I also took it at, at this part, in, 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 you know, this part, section of the game, you don't want anyone who you can't trust or is not committed to you. And I think that Rick probably took it as, this guy's, uh, who knows if, if I have him do certain things, if he's really going to, if he's going to run out once I have him go do certain things, or if he's going to stay with the group. Like, he's he's also kind of another one who was a loose canyon. You didn't, you didn't know where he was going to go. I, I mean, you also, I, I get what you're saying, and I get that, but it's just like, he runs away because he just witnessed his friend get murdered, and he wants to run away from the murderer, Damn. who's going to presumably maybe murder him. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, that's that's what I would take it as. And I mean, you know, Rick's thinking this mentality, what your mentality that you mentioned, which is just like, I got to take care of business and get it done. But he's, I mean, to me, it was just that other glimpse of Rick losing his humanity. Yeah. Because I think if this was season one, Rick, he would have saved the guy. Yeah. And maybe sure. he maybe still would have killed um, he, T Tomas. But I think he would have saved Andrew if it had been I season one. I believe that. So we're just seeing that character arc really come to a head, mm -hmm. where he's really transformed at this point. Yeah. And then back with all the other group, and then he comes back. We've got Axel, who's still alive, and Oscar. And Axel is, uses drugs, but he's an okay guy. He's like, <laughs> I use drugs, but I'm not a murderer. And he's, he's vouching for Oscar. Mm -hmm. And Oscar refuses to beg for his life, but he hasn't run away at all or anything to that extent. I actually thought originally that maybe Axel, he has dice on his neck, that maybe he was a gambler or something. I mean, it Not could that be. that would put him in jail necessarily, but I, that was my original thought. I actually really enjoyed Oscar's line when he said, when, when the gun was pointed to his head, and he said, I ain't never pleaded for my life. Yeah, you know, do like, what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Yeah, I'm not about to start now. I'm not about to start now. I like that, too. And I think Rick, obviously Rick liked it as well respected and respected that. it. Yeah. Yeah. So Rick ends up letting them live after that point and brings them back and it we see the the rest of the group kind of show a little bit more humanity than rick at this point daryl like they they find the cell block prisoners where it looks like the prisoners have been, just been murdered like mm -hmm. they didn't even they weren't zombies necessarily they just got straight up murdered somehow because they're all laying in a row yeah and it, it looked like they line. were all handcuffed or, or something they were tied up it looked like their hands were to their back what it appeared to be but it was so uniform that it yeah. seems something different and yeah. Oscar mentions that this is sick. How could anybody do this? And specifically with Rick just leaving them there. Mm -hmm. And Daryl's like, you think this is sick? Go outside. And Daryl also, he and then kind of gives them some pointers and shows them humanity. T-Dog tells them to burn the, the bodies. And it seems like Daryl does feel bad for them a yeah. little bit. He says at the end, sorry about your friends, man. Yeah, so he does feel bad, and T-Dog gives them the advice, so it seems like T-Dog feels bad as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So before we move on to the whole Herschel storyline, I do want to mention, guys, that we would love your support in any way possible, We, uh, whether it be going on iTunes, going on YouTube, rate us, comment, positive or negative, it's fine. We just love getting your feedback. We want to know how we can make this show better for you guys because we love doing it, and we just want you guys to enjoy it too. So enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing it. <laughs> So let's then talk about uh, the whole Herschel storyline. And as Herschel gets into um, the room with everybody, it's kind of Carol takes the charge for trying to fix him up and gets getting bandages together because um, he's bleeding out. And I, I'm just, I was sort of wondering, I don't know, maybe they mentioned this, but would they have thought of maybe using a fire to solder the wound in a way? Did they mention that at all? I don't remember it being mentioned. Because that's kind of what my thought was, was it's bleeding out of control. Why wouldn't, and he's already passed out, so might as well try to use a fire like we saw Merle do in the first season. Okay. They kind of try and solder the wound shut. 
And we kind of talked about this last week. And I don't Although I'm no had... doctor, so if that wouldn't work, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember if we came up with an answer, but how long does it take for the the disease to actually go through your system well, if you're a bit? Well, they don't. Or... And, and they never answer Yeah, they that. never answer that. And, you know, they're all infected. And I think it's funny. I was having a Twitter conversation with one of the people who watched the show. Um, and it, it's kind of like, to me, it's like... A, of snake bites almost it's like yeah. snake venom it's like it kills you but it's they're already infected so the infection so is what makes the them come back to right. life but yeah. a zombie bites like venom so yeah. yeah it's like i don't know how long it takes the venom to curse through the body but well, he chopped off that leg pretty quick and obviously quick. they don't know because they still handcuffed him to the bed i mean this yeah. is the first time we've seen them do this in the show it's probably one of the first times that they have done it right oh yeah yeah and this is the first Everybody time they've done still a period has their limbs except for herschel now. yeah so it's just the first time that they've done it, period. Mm -hmm. Can I can I say something? Yeah. Well, what I feel like is, uh, let me turn my mic down a bit. Um, yeah. Um, well, everyone's infected, of course, with the zombie virus that makes you, you know, kind of turn into a zombie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. what really kills you is not the infection itself. It's an infection from, like, bacteria and everything because the right. zombies are so infected. So it's not so much the zombie virus that kills you it's the infection that kills you and then you become a zombie well right because yeah they're already infected already infected but I, yeah and i was thinking it the same way like a zombie bites almost like snake venom like it's i mean it's poison to the body or maybe bacteria or whatever it is but it's just something that's going to kill a person really quickly oh okay my bad i mean well i mean no maybe you're right maybe it's like a bacteria <laughs> but i mean i was just I, I was thinking of almost like a venom that courses through your body and it's just like poison that poisons you and kills you. Yeah. But I mean, maybe it's a bacterial because they're so infected, it just speeds up the process. But I mean, maybe we'll find out in future episodes. <laughs> so we, we've got Maggie is really upset about this. Um, so is Beth. Beth and Maggie, who are Herschel's children, are really upset. And Glenn is trying to be there for Maggie to comfort her. Mm -hmm. He's telling her that, hey, he's still here. You know, Herschel's still alive. And Maggie's trying to be realistic about it. And she, what she's worried about is even if he does survive somehow by some off chance, he's not going to be able to run. And all we'd seen them, well, that we got implied to us that they've been doing during the off season is just running nonstop. Yeah. So how would he ever survive in this new world? And it made me kind of think about that this is kind of how things are with animals too and it's kind of mm -hmm. the survival of the fittest mentality but if you take a horse if a horse breaks its leg it's done i mean that's like when a horse is running on a, a racetrack when you do horse races it breaks its leg you put it down you take it out of its misery <laughs> and yeah you just called herschel but i know i was like <laughs> man you just called herschel a horse <laughs> but i mean it's kind of that same thing though where it's just like this is what things would be like in that sense where you lose a limb you're gone in, in a lot of ways because it, it's just like there's no way you could possibly survive in this world if you don't have a limb, at least the way that they've been living. There really is a death sentence, yeah. not having a leg. And I think they're still hoping that they're in the prison and that's a safe place for them. Right, but I mean, for Maggie's points at that yeah. time, with uh, where if they're going to be running around, how is he ever going to survive? Yeah. That would be hard. Yeah, I mean, at the end of I mean, Herschel is one of my favorite characters, but he's also an older character on the sh uh, you know on the show and it's going to be hard for him to maneuver around once they leave the prison so it is going to i mean i don't know if i want to put him down because of the history that they have with him but it's it's definitely going to well i mean i'm not suggesting putting group. him down but my my only point was just that like in the horse sense that a horse just it's literally it won't be able to survive after it breaks a leg yeah that's more of what i meant and it's just that sense of will he even be able to survive to survive yeah um, so, but after that, we've got that Beth is, she's kind of torn up, trying to, she's trying to believe in Carol, that Carol can heal. And at this point, we've only seen Herschel as the true, mm -hmm. uh, one who can heal people, even though yeah. he's a veterinarian. Yeah. Um, he, he's the one, so it's best trying to believe in him. And Rick kind of entrusts Glenn to, with Herschel. And we get this conversation that you mentioned earlier, Kristen, that wishes between Rick and Lori. And Lori says that she knows she's been a really bad wife. And she's not winning a Mother of the Year award. Mm -hmm. And we finally kind of get, and again, we get, like, Lori trying to support Rick again. And she's um, she's, she's kind of supporting him. He, he, he's asking her for advice, and he, she's like, I believe that you have no malice in your heart. I think you're going to do the right thing. I believe in whatever you're going to do is going to be best for the group. And as much as he, I know, dislikes her at this point for everything that he's done, I think it's important that he went to her for advice. Yeah. Clearly, he does still care 
about what she thinks. Yeah. He doesn't go to anybody else to ask them what he should do. He only goes to Lori. Yeah. So as much as she thinks that he doesn't care for her anymore or just does because maybe she's the mother, he wouldn't have asked her for advice unless he really cared about what she thought. So he does, deep down, really still care for her. Listen, and that's kind of what I got out of that. At this point, just stay together. Where, where are you going to go? <laughs> I mean, wh why separate? You need every, like I said before, you need everybody in your group. Granted, Lori's pregnant. She's, you know, not in the same situation as they are. But I think Rick still trusts her overall. Mm -hmm. I think he knows that she has his back still, even though there's been a lot of craziness that's gone on between those those two. But I think that he, she is probably still, I mean, she's his wife. I mean, he still trusts her, you know. Mm -hmm. Just and, don't let her drive a car. Don't let her drive a car. No. Yeah. No. Don't let her drive a car. I don't car. think she could fit in the car right now. No. It. So we're good. Yeah. <laughs> and what cars? Well, I guess they have their cars. But and oh, go ahead. No, and I was gonna say, and I think Lori's just feeling obviously more vulnerable right now. She had that blow up with Carl. He was supposed to go get food. I think that that happens after this oh, point. Oh, happens after. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, to me though, this I guess I still take it as like Rick's going to her for advice, despite everything. He, I, I just think. Not even just trusting her, I think he still cares about her because you're gonna go to somebody you care about for advice. Yeah. He trusts Daryl. He could have gone to Daryl for advice about what to do. You know, mm -hmm. he could have gone to anybody, but he goes to her, and I think it's because he does still really care for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So th that's what I got out of it, and I thought it was a key conversation because of that. But after this all happens, that's when Rick kind of heads out, and we get that Maggie's upset about the whole handcuff thing that they end up handcuffing up um, Herschel. Mm -hmm. and she wants some alone time with him. And she has this heartfelt moment with Herschel where she's kind of assuming here that he's going to die and tells him that you don't have to fight anymore yeah. and thanks him for everything. And it's just kind of a really touching moment. It was that a they great have. scene. I like, yeah, the actress the who actress, played maybe. Uh, that's um, Lauren Cohan. And I, I believe that she's British. I believe She is she British. Is. She is British. She, she, that we scene, a lot of that on the show. I, yeah. I, I felt that emotion from her. She did some superb acting in this. Yeah, I think I she's a great actress, too. I think she's been doing a phenomenal job. This mm -hmm. scene was another example of it. I, it. I started feeling really sad, too. And it's and not be, it's because she was so sad. Not because Herschel was dying, but because she was so sad, I started feeling sad. Well, especially as a parent, I would imagine, at least um, not to get too morbid, but in my family, when we had my grandma died, I think she held on a little bit longer to be able to, to see family and make sure they were taken care of. And she's just probably letting Herschel know that it's okay to, um, to go because the daughters are okay. They've got each other and they've... They've got a group now. So this is where we have Carl on his own going to the infirmary, and he kills a couple zombies. And Lori, as a parent would be, because she's a mom, is mad at him for going off on his own <laughs> because Herschel, yeah. with, with, as she says, was with the whole group. Right. And look what happened to him. Yeah. And Carl blows up at her. Just yeah. blows up. And I thought it was interesting that Beth ends up standing up for Lori. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Beth, the little crush going on there, ends up standing up for Lori. Like, hey, you can't talk to your mother like that. And he listens to her. Yeah, he does. But, but I love that I Carl that. said, I killed two walkers. Like, <laughs> like that justified it. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, you, And he lied to Glenn, because when Glenn came back, when he came back in, Glenn had talked to him about it. And he goes, I thought you were organizing the food. He goes, I had something else in mind. Yeah. Basically. But I think this is, to me, was a key moment, because up to this point, we'd only heard... Lori talking about being a terrible mother and how this tension with Carl. And we hadn't seen any of it. And you guys said it was hormones. And I think it's hormones. <laughs> and Carl's a teenager. And yeah, and I was about to say, <laughs> Carl's a teenager. Carl's though. got hormones Carl's too. A, Carl's, well, Carl's got some yeah, hormones too. Carl's got a lot of hormones going, <laughs> got a lot going on. on. <laughs> so Carl's a teenager though, and I, that's another thing that you got to keep in mind that he's going to have a lot of these moments because he's a teenager. But this is the first time that we see that we actually see and witness Carl. Mm -hmm blowing up at Lori yeah. or just like having an awkward tension moment. Yeah. But how do you, I mean, I was, I was asking this question as we were watching it earlier, how do you actually parent Carl at this point? I mean, he's seen everything, but he's killed walkers. He's killed Shane. I mean, what can they say to him at this point that, you know what I mean? He's like, he's not a regular teenager. What can they say to him to really keep him in check? You still have to be a good example. Yeah, I mean, it's just being a positive role model and an yeah. example, I think. And it's not necessarily what you've seen, but how you how you deal with it. I mean, you could say that, I don't know. I don't know how to be a parent in general, so right. I think it's just yeah. like, I guess it's just being a good role model and 
I, I think that's the best you can do at that point. Yeah. Well, you still have to set some sort of guidelines, I think, for him. Everybody I mean, I, needs rules. I mean, when I was a teenager, bit. I had rules, but I mean, sometimes you break them because you're a teenager and you're rebelling, or maybe you wouldn't. But I mean, you still, as a parent, try to set rules. Well, I guess I'm like, what, well, how are they going to ground him? <laughs> you know, like you have to go to the prison cell and sit go there. Go to your for, cell. Go to your cell for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you ground him? Well, I mean, maybe now they they're they really could. thinking, yeah, they could do that now. Because uh, maybe he can't there. talk to, you can't hang out with Beth for two days, something uh, like that. Uh, yeah. I'm so, taking away your hat. <laughs> uh, we get, we get um, after this, Maggie's watching over Herschel, and he stops breathing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she calls over Lori for help, and Lori tries CPR, and we get that little moment there of, is he alive or not? Mm -hmm. And he reaches up, and he's still fine. He's not a zombie. But the thing that we got there is Carl had his gun ready as soon as that uh, happened. Yeah. He was ready to go. Yeah. So this is what we're seeing Carl growing up as. Yeah. Yeah. Total badass. Total badass. So, after this uh, scene is that we finally get Herschel um, having the slow open of his eyes and the reveal that he's alive, there's no fever, and it, it was kind of a close-up there. And for those of you who read the comics, I know in the, in the show, Dale is dead. But for those of you who read the comics, Dale loses a leg and they save him in this exact manner in the prison. So, Herschel has essentially become the new Dale. Of, of the comics, so I, I, I sort of thought this was going to happen last week. I, just, I didn't want to say anything, but that's um, Herschel has become the new Dale, and Herschel, the leg amputation worked, and that's a key point here. Now we know that you can save people this way. Mm -hmm. If you get bit, you can save them at the loss of a limb, but you can yeah. save them. They can be saved. Yeah. What did you guys think that once he woke up, the first person he wanted to have his hand be held with was Rick? Yeah, that was and weird to me. And not his daughter's. I, I noticed that, too, and I was thinking, like, I thought maybe it's just because it was convenient because he was so close. Mm -hmm. But they were all right there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I was trying to figure that out. But it, maybe it's because of the fact that, I mean, he and Rick have really, even from last season, have just formed this bond. Um, and I just think there's probably just that bond that they have going on. That is probably why he asked for him. Sure. Maybe the fact that he was the one that did cut off his leg. And he and cut off yeah, his it leg. could be because Rick As was a thank you. Rick was the initial yeah. one who saved him. He so saved maybe him. Yeah, yeah, so maybe yeah. it's that initial like it worked type of thing like yeah. And thank he was you. out when Carol stopped the blood, so yeah. you can't really thank her. Not that she was And there. Carol's also not there at the moment. Yeah. But um after this, Lori's the first one to leave. She kinda just leaves and Rick follows her out and they have another moment there and i almost feel like uh, things are sort of healing as much as their conversation was sort of on the negative side rick tells her that he doesn't think she's a bad mother and she's saying like well i'm still a terrible wife and he doesn't respond to that well but um he she says today was a good day things good happen but they're kind of complimenting each other and even though rick doesn't open up to her and say that no you're a fine wife or anything like that mm -hmm. he's still in a way there for her yeah. and try, there's sort of slowly healing i feel like well at this i moment. like when he complimented her at one point he used a little bit of the group the group is great with you here and that means he right. liked that she was there it was just kind of funny i i think he wanted to say that but didn't didn't just to kind of keep his cool he's and just still being a, know that I'm angry and I'm the... He's being a guy about it. Yeah, this is what we bit. do. This <laughs> is how we do. we do it when we're angry. I couldn't say that I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, he's being very much a guy about it. Yeah. And he does have that moment too where he puts his hand on her shoulder mm -hmm. to kind of comfort her a little bit too. And it's the first time that I think this season we've even seen him touch her. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first moment of touching. And after he leaves, she sort of puts her head on her shoulder where he touches her. So mm -hmm. we do get that physical connection there a little bit too. Yeah. yeah. Well, they said this season they were going to have a lot of tension between those two. So we're definitely seeing it. But I, I feel like it's almost like a little bit of healing, at least in this episode. I, I think I saw, I, I feel like I saw positive things coming from Rick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like positive signals. Yeah. Even yeah. though it was all coming out negative in a lot of ways, I think it was all really deep down positive signals. Yeah. So before we talk about 
C-sections. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's briefly say that, guys, there are tons of awesome shows that AfterBuzz does. You've got Revolution that Daryl Kristen and I all do together. So you can watch that AfterBuzz show. And then tons of other ones, like Homeland was just on Once Upon a Time, which is one of Kristen's favorite shows. I love that show. It's so 666 good. 666 Park Avenue. Which Daryl also does. Scandal. Or usually does. Yep. Yep. Usually, usually does. Usually does. Yes. Scandal. So <laughs> lots of great shows. Definitely check them out if you listen to any other or watch any other shows. Check out our other shows. Let's talk about C-sections and what uh, <laughs> great transition there. And what what uh, Carol's all about this episode is making sure that Lori's okay, and she keeps bringing up the pregnancy with Lori. Mm -hmm. And even though Lori's acting cool about it, Carol is not. Yeah. So she takes Glenn out so they can get a human cadaver, so she can practice a C-section because, as we find out, she had a cesarean with Carl. So mm -hmm. she's probably going to again because that's just how it tends to be. Once you the if you have one, it, it's very likely you're going to have another one. Mm -hmm. So, not a uh, scene that I didn't want to witness. Unfortunately, they cut away before we got to witness anything. <laughs> I see it so bad. It's funny, like, I'm fine with watching zombies get killed, but as soon as it was just, like, cutting the show, the C-section, I was like, do we really need to see that, guys? I, I don't want to see that. that. I wanted to see what, the, what it looked like inside once you were turned into a zombie. I, wa I wanted them to show it. I, well, we kind of see that every time a zombie's limb is cut off. Yeah, Director's but not cut, like, maybe? Not, like, open. Like, I wanted to see a real surgery, you know? Well, maybe we'll get it. And, <laughs> and we get a little bit of uh, bush watching there. Who could it be in the bushes? And that's kind of uh, the cliffhanger, in a sense, that yeah. we end on it with the episode is the, the creepy people in the bushes. I was wondering where you were going with the bush watching because of the fact that <laughs> Carol lifted up the... I, I was, the are, are we going there, Daryl? I'm just saying, I was wondering where we were going with this conversation. It's because she had underwear on. <laughs> yeah, she had underwear on. I, was, I know, but I was like, wait a minute, where are we going with this conversation right now? I know I'm bad, but I'm not that bad, Daryl. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Although if you go on Norman Reedus's Twitter, which he's hilarious, you should follow him. Yeah. He actually had a, a zombie uh, naked picture in one of them. Oh, yeah, him really? And, like one of the other set people were, were pointing at it. Uh, don't need to see that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw enough of that in this episode. I'll, look. I'll, look. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Send it to me, please. Okay. So, with that said, the question is, is this Woodbury that we're seeing here? Mm -hmm. And is that going to be the group? And we will talk about them more when we get to predictions. But first, guys, we have got some news and gossip for all of you. After Buzz TV News. All right. Let's see. News and gossip. Well, first off, um, some people already know this because they have Dish, but AMC settled their Dish dispute uh, just in time for tonight's episode of Walking Dead. And yes, I know. Glad for those Dish people. That and means Breaking Bad, too. That means Breaking Ooh. Bad as well. AMC has settled its legal battle with Dish Networks, thus ensuring that Dish subscribers will once again be able to spend their Sunday nights watching the cast of Walking Dead. Uh, they came to a 7 hundred million dollar agreement man that's a lot of money um but dish agreed to pay amc and they entered into a multi-year agreement to air the channels comprising amc networks which includes amc ifc sundance channel and we tv i mean i have to say amc has gotten way better and way more on my personal radar with walking dead and breaking bad and shows like the killing it's just definitely been rising up it's have you seen rising. hell on wheels I haven't. Is that AMC as well? Yeah, it's. I watched it on Netflix last time. I'm addicted. It's great. So there you go. Even more great AMC shows. So they're rising. And yeah. it's almost to the point where I, I'm starting to think, do I like AMC or HBO more? I'm starting to go with AMC. I'm starting to go with AMC. So. And I'm not biased, but I'm just saying. All right. So CNN, CNN.com reported last week that Walking Dead delivered 10.9 million viewers for yeah. the first telecast. <laughs> And it's their best premiere. Yeah. The, yeah, they said it's their, their thir the third season premiere of the zombie show, obviously, delivered the big the biggest ratings they've ever seen. So that's huge. Congratulations yeah, huge to the congratulations. cast and the writers. And so, Steven Young Steve was in uh, our, our studio at work the other day, and he said that he had stopped in the writer's room, and they were basically popping champagne and celebrating. Yeah, because you never know until it happens. And especially yes. season two, a lot of people were talking about they didn't like it as much. So mm -hmm. I was almost wondering if viewership was going to drop. But apparently, it was even better. Up. Well, they started with a bang. I mean, you know, that we yeah, it's only more to come. Literally. Yeah, literally. Oh, pun intended. Okay, and my last piece of news for this week is reported from examiner.com. It says that the Walking Dead Collector's Edition ex it will be exclusive to GameStop. Um, it will be available in December for $29.99. Tell, tell, tell Games confirmed Sunday. 
that The Walking Dead is getting a collector's edition when the PS3 and Xbox adventure game hits retail in December. Now, now for you, those of you guys who don't know, the Telltale games have been being released episodically. You can download them on Xbox Live or PSN or your iPad or on Steam. So you can be getting them episodically. Episode 4 just got released, I think, last week or two weeks ago. Episode 5 is being released in November, which is the final chapter. But this will be the collection of all of them, so you can buy them on one convenient disc, yep. as opposed to downloading each episode separately. Yeah, and it just to kind of piggyback off of that, it said the game will hit stores and will have all five episodes that have been released digitally in two flavors. Is it November that's coming out, did you say, or no, December? December 4th. Okay, that makes sense. So like pretty much right after episode five comes out yeah. digitally. Just in time for Christmas in or time Hanukkah? For Christmas. <laughs> Christmas <gift. laughs> just in time. Just in time. All that's right. what I have for news. And we're going to get some a so, so couple special segments then. Yep. And one thing I want to mention is last week we told you guys why we all die, and I forgot to bring it up. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it up this week. If you go to the Walking Dead website, as Kristen pointed out to all of us, she sent us all <laughs> an awesome quiz you can take for which Walking Dead character would you be? Would you survive? Would you die? Turns out we all got the same character. We are all Dale. I still so can't believe that. Every single one of us is Dale. Daryl's the only one who's really not happy I'm about it. I'm disturbed by it. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like Rick. You're disturbed because you're going to be an old man. Yeah, I'm going to be an old man, and I thought that some of my decisions were a little bit edgier than that, <laughs> than what I got. So I just kept saving ammo because I was like, oh, these aren't these zombies aren't going to kill me. I, w- I want to save it for somebody that's actually attacking me, and I guess that was... I just I, I just end. did what I thought was right, and that's what Dale does is what he thinks is right. So I would kill zombies if I needed to, but I would conserve ammo if I needed to. But I took it as Dale is the one who is reasonable mm-hmm. in the group. He's the one. He's always the voice of reason. So guys, we're just the voices of reason. Yeah, we're the we're, voice s- of we're reason. the smart voices of reason. We will do things if they're necessary. But we won't act crazy if it's not necessary. But I guess my biggest problem is, where did that get us? Where is Dale right now? In By the comics, smart. he's still alive. In the comics, he's still <laughs> At alive. At this point, but so. Yes. All right, yeah. well. Yeah, but he I'll, has no leg. I'll take the comic book Dale versus the TV series. And he's there. banging uh, Andrea. Andrea in the comics at this point. That blew my mind, so he's, yeah, that's by the way. Weird. So yeah, he's, uh, he's getting some young, some young tail there. Exactly. So also in the news for you guys is our very own Sir Richard Wentworth. If you guys watch the intro, which I'm sure you do every single week, he is the voice, the voiceover for our intro. And he is part of a new band called The Unliving Dead. And their first music video, Zombie Love Song, theme from The Unleavened Dead, was just Unleavened Dead, was just released. You can watch it on YouTube, I believe. You can download it now on iTunes. And it kind of is a take on the whole zombie outbreak and the whole idea of what happens with relationships yeah. when this happens and what would what would kind of come down. Yeah, it's it's uh, the video is based off of a couple, and it looks like they're going to a concert and they get into a fight. The girlfriend leaves out, and and during the she runs storms out the door in the middle of the zombie apocalypse and she becomes a zombie and returns home. And he said he was inspired by season one where Rick meets the father and son and how his wife as Morgan a zombie Jones. still, there we go, yeah. uh, still returned home every day and how that would happen if it was a real couple. I did like in the video, I give props, I, I'm a huge How I Met Your Mother fan and the girl in the video when she goes out and it's raining, she had a yellow umbrella. Ah, uh, that was cute. I love how I met your mother too. So great. That's another great show. Maybe we should do what we should do an after show for that too. All right, guys. Um, I want to get to comments real quick, and then we'll talk about predictions. So, guys on YouTube, thank you guys so much for commenting. We had Rob Chapman, Kyle Foster, Home Spice thirty three, Smitty Blue twenty one, Raptos, TM Leafs, Chaos thirteen two one two, The Woody Man one, Two K Pete, Jalad Wino, and Alex Jam Relax. And I want to say Kyle Foster and Woody Man one. I remember you guys from Game of Thrones. Thank you guys for also watching this. I appreciate it. Home Spice 33. He said that he views two zombie, the two zombies we were talking about last week, Michonne. The, and that's something we didn't see Michonne at all this week no. or Andrea. But we see in the preview for next week. But we see that they're going to be next week. Yeah. Yeah. But he said that he kind of viewed the two zombies as pack mules oh, that okay. she's using. So Might like well. to bring every everything along. Uh, Raptos said that Kind of giving us ages, he looked it up for us, and that Beth is currently 16 in the show. Carl is 13. Mm. Yeah. So Carl is definitely going through puberty right now. That he is. Oh, Actually, woman. Beth is as well. So a lot of puberty going on. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hormones everywhere. <laughs> a lot of hormones. <laughs> well, we uh, also said what the zombies were uh, in the comic books, which I, I know we had talked about but weren't sure if we wanted to give that away. But we had a comment that, that mentioned that as well. Yeah, and I, I wrote it down. I'm like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't. But if, if you guys wanted to go check it out, it does say in the, the, the reveal in the comics of who they are. Mm-hmm. But in iTunes, we have Sari. I think it's Sari. Sari JJ, Menel, 
Men, Mena 10, Flo, Andy P5010, and Montia Garcia, and Bblast77 commenting. Thank you guys so much. Montia Garcia thinks that I, I shout too much, guys. Quiet, I, I shout way I, too much. Could you say it again, Dave? I didn't hear you the first time. <laughs> Montia, this is for you. <laughs> oh, she's really going to love you now. I think it's Montia. I, I think I just said that. Montia. I think, well, I guess that would, would it be a girl or a guy? Monty, wow. why don't you recomment and tell me? Yeah. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so let's get the predictions then. So predictions. Uh, we see that we're going to get... All we really got in the predictions was and Michonne. Now, you're oh. after Buzz you're, you're TV. Early there. You're, you're early. I was just like trying so to go. I'm so excited about the predictions because I'm shouting now. So we get Michonne and... Andrea for the whole predictions. I don't think we got anything else really in the prediction or from what's going to happen next no, week. Yeah. Not from Rick's group. You but, didn't see them. But it looks like we're going to see a lot of Woodbury. Governor's yeah, finally going to come into play. Governor's going to come to play. So. Mm -hmm. So Woodbury, we got Michonne. It looks like she's going to be cutting off some more zombies' heads. The helicopter cl crash, which was also part of the comics, we're going to yeah. see that there, and I'll talk about some of the differences next week from the comics because it looks like it's already going to be different. But I'm excited to see Woodbury. What about you guys? Yeah. Oh, sure. I want to I'm, see this whole uh, governor storyline play out on the series versus the comic book. So, I want eventually Rick's group does get in there. I want to see the dynamics with how that works because you have the governor who's in charge of that whole town. That's obviously a bigger group than Rick's. Yeah, just how that works out. And, and I want to see Merle. I want to see what's up with. Yeah, him. I see him briefly at the end. Oh yeah, we do. We get that glimpse yeah, of, Merle. Mm -hmm. of Merle. So he's gonna be coming back. Yeah. Hopefully next episode. You think it's a good brother re brother reunion? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really bad brother I think reunion. It's gonna be weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm also wondering what's going to be happening with the prisoners if we're going to see some tension between Oscar and Axel next week and the um, and the group. But guys, thank you so much for uh, watching the show. Guys, once again, I'm Dave Klein. You can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K-L-E-I-N or DJKOnline.com. Hey guys, I'm Kristen Carroll, and you can find me on Twitter at the Fan F A N Two C T O S E E. What's up, guys? I'm Dario Kristen, and you can find me at D E R R I A L C H R I S T O N on Twitter and on Facebook. See you guys next week. <laughs> From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz. Buzz. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.